Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make these slow motion particles. It's going to be a fairly quick tutorial, pretty straightforward to follow, so without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up Blender, delete the default cube, I'll hit Shift A, add mesh and we'll go for cylinder, I'll then hit RX90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. I'm going to hit SY.25 and then hit enter and that will scale it in by 0.25. I hit control A and apply the scale. I'm going to hit numpad 1 to go into side view. I'm going to toggle on my x-ray. I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to hit number 1 for vertices select. I'll then box select all of these vertices here. I'm going to hold down shift and box select all of these vertices here. Maybe I'll box select this one as well. I'll then hit X and we'll delete vertices. So we're left with this here. I'll then tab out of edit mode. I'm going to hit control two and that will add a subdivision surface at level two. Alternatively, you can click add modifier, go to generate and then subdivision surface. I'll then tab into edit mode. I'm going to hit control R to add a loop cut in the middle here. I'll then hit control B to bevel that and I'll bevel it out to round about there. Okay, I'll then tab out of edit mode, hit numpad 1 for side view. We need to scale this down because it's quite large at the moment. I'll hit S.1, enter. I'll then hit Ctrl A and apply the scale. I'll then hit G, Z, hold down Ctrl, snap it to the grid till it's around about there. This is going to be our emitter. Let's add the particle. So I'm going to hit Shift A, add, we'll go for mesh and we'll choose icosphere i'll then hit z shade smooth hit s.1 to scale it down by 0.1 and maybe one more time s.1 to scale it down by 0.1 one more time i'll then hit Control a and apply the scale let's just rename this object to particle we'll select our cylinder object and we'll rename this to emitter let's give the particle a material i'll take my cursor to the bottom left hand corner until i see this crosshair i'm just going to drag this up and i'm going to change this to shader editor i'll then click new we we'll just rename this material to particle i hit n to close that panel there i'm going to delete the principal bsdf i'm going to hit shift a add and we'll go for shader and we'll choose emission shader shift a and we'll go for converter and we'll go to color ramp shift a converter math and we'll change this to divide i'll then hit shift a and we go to input and we'll choose particle info we're going to divide the age by the lifetime and we're going to plug that into the color ramp and the color will go into the emission and the emission will go into the material output i'll dive into this in a bit let's just set the strength to 25 i'll then select my cylinder object i'm going to bring this back down i'm going to go to my particle settings over here i'm going to click this plus button to add a new particle system i'm going to set the number of particles to 10,000. just randomly change the seed i want the particles to start spawning on frame one so i'll keep that onto frame one and I want them to stop spawning on frame 180 and I want a lifetime of 120 frames so the particles when they've been spawned they will live for 120 frames and then they'll disappear but I also want to change the lifetime randomization so I'll set this to 0.5 I'll then open up this source tab here we want the particles to spawn from the faces I'll then click use modifier stack and what that does it ensures that all the modifiers above the particle system are taking into consideration when calculating the physics go back to my particle settings here I'm going to change the distribution type to random as far as the cache goes you need to save your file first so I've already saved mine if I click disk cache this will save your particles where your default cache is set for blender if you click use library path that means that your cache will be saved in the same file location as where your file is saved whereas if you uncheck this one which is what I'm going to do is actually going to save and bake your cache into the blender file itself and keep the cache steps set to one under velocity i'm going to set this to 10 meters per second and for the randomization i might set this to 0.8 I'm going to enable rotation it's probably not going to use this but i'm going to enable it anyway it doesn't hurt i'll then collapse this window there under physics i'm going to set the brownian to 0.25 just to give it a bit of random movement and for the subframes i'm going to set this to let's say eight and what subframes does it calculates eight frames for every frame on your timeline it makes the particle simulation a lot more accurate currently i'm running at 30 frames per second so set your scene frame to 30 frames per second 
and that means for every frame on my timeline instead of calculating one frame is actually going to calculate eight frames because I've got eight subframes selected here you don't have to have it that high maybe set it to two or four minimum and for my render I'll click this button here I'm going to change it from halo to object and the object is going to be the particle and I'm going to choose object rotation so now if I push play all the particles are shooting out exactly as they should be now to add the slow motion part so under your physics tab here you're going to see this timestamp the default value is 0 0.040 we're going to set this to 0 0.0025 and now if I skip back and push play you can see all these are going a lot slower in fact I might even change that a bit more to 0 0.002 I'll skip back hit play excellent so they're going a lot more slower so now we need to add a collision object so i'm going to hit shift a add mesh and we choose plane i'll then hit s4 to scale it up by four i'll then hit Control a and apply the scale to that it's always important to apply the scale otherwise your calculations will be off i'll then go over to here to physics click the physics tab i'm going to select the collision this is fairly easy to set up this is the stickiness so if you want your particles to stick to the plane or not i'm just going to set that to point one uh, the dampening is the amount of dampening for bounce so if you have zero dampening these are just going to bounce up and down for infinity so i'm going to turn this up to around about 0 0.3 0 0.4 ish something around about there i'll then randomize that dampening a bit and for the friction is how much the particles are going to skid across the plane i don't want too much friction on this i want them to sort of roll about a bit so i'll just set this to around about the 0.2 mark i'll also randomize that friction slightly the soft body and cloth dampening that doesn't matter for this simulation let's just select this object here i hit numpad 7 to go into top view and then zoom out i'm going to hit g x hold down control snap it to the grid to around about there okay i then go to my particle system i'm going to change the seed i'll then click the rewind button back to frame one i'll then hit play let's just see what we've got so far they're bouncing quite high up in the air maybe i can turn my dampening up a bit slightly on my plane so go back to your physics with your plane i'm going to turn up the dampening to something around about there i then select this object here i'm going to skip back to the first frame i hit play okay that's a bit better maybe we can uh, adjust this object here as well so i'm just going to select all these top vertices here i'll then hit x delete vertices i'll tap out of edit mode i go back to my particle system i'm just going to change my seed just to ensure that i don't get any errors i'll then skip back to the first frame i hit play okay now i'll set my end frame to 300 so the total simulation should last for 300 frames i'm then going to go to my cache i'm going to click bake all dynamics i'll then hit play let's see what we've got okay i'm kind of happy with that i'll just show you this randomization setting here so i'm going to delete all bakes and with the randomization turn off if i push play i'm going into this view here so if I push play, you'll see that they're all going in a straight line. But if I turn my randomization up, you can see that they're spreading out a lot more. So maybe I want them to spread out a little bit. So I'm going to set that to 2. Let's just see what that does. Okay, so I'm going to skip to the first frame. I'm going to click Make All Dynamics. I'll then choose sort of a midpoint so I know where my particles are going to end and I'll set up the camera so I'm hitting numpad 0 to go into camera view I'll then select my camera and I'm going to move this across till I've got everything in the scene maybe I'll rotate it minus 45 degrees I'll bring it down to 0 0.25 so that's 25 centimeters high and I'll bring this in to around about there this is only going to work in cycles if I go to viewport shading check out what we've got so far obviously it's white we're going to change this in a minute so I'm going to select my particle object and we're going to change the colors on the color ramp let's add some flags first so we're going to need one two three four five let's add five flags so this first flag here this is going to be right at the beginning of the spawning so we'll set this to like a bright white but possibly sort of a slight yellowish tinge this next flag we're going to set to like a yellow color a bright yellow something around there this next flag we're going to set to an orange color something around about there and this flag here we'll set this to a red color in fact we'll make it pure red and 
for this last flag. I'm going to set this to black and I'm going to give it an alpha value of 0.25. So now if we drag these flags you can see what's happening. The red's getting closer to the spawning point and if I drag this across the alpha makes it disappear. So we'll drag this across, we'll drag this over to around about there. Maybe we'll drag this across to summit around about there. Now this setup here, this doesn't work in EV. It only works in cycles. If you want it to work in EV, you're going to have to disconnect this and just have the emission shader, which you can set to like an orange color, something like that. And let me just open up EV quick. Also, I'd enable bloom and you'll also have to enable motion blur, which you can set to 1.2. I'm not going to use EV. Let's just render out one frame from EV, see what we've got. As you can see, you're getting the motion blur there, but this does work a lot better in cycles. So I'm going to flip back to cycles. I'll plug this into here. I'm then going to enable motion blur. I'm going to change the shutter speed to 1.2. And I'm going to change the shutter curve to this first curve here. So now if I push F12, you can kind of see what we're getting there. Let's adjust our camera so it's a bit better placed. So I'll grab my camera. I'll drag it on the X axis, somewhere around about there, then maybe Maybe I'll rotate it to around about there. Also, for this particle system, I'm going to go over to my particle settings over here. I'm going to scroll down to where it says render and then click this button that says show emitter because we don't want to see the emitter in the actual final render. I'll also select this plane here. I'll drag this up and I'm going to click new to add a new material. I'll turn it to like a greyish value and I'm going to set it to metallic with a roughness value of 0.25. Let's just see what we've got there. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. I'm not really happy with the spread. It's spreading out quite a lot, so I might decrease the randomness. So I'll go back to my particle settings. I'm gonna delete all the banks, and I'm gonna change the randomize factor on the velocity to one. I might also increase the amount of particles. So at the moment, I've got it set to 10,000. I might change it to 25,000. I'll then change the seed. I'm gonna skip back to the first frame, just to ensure we get no errors. I then hit Bakel Dynamics. I then go into camera view, so numpad zero. I'm going to push play, just see what we've got here. Maybe I can change the particle size as well. On my particle settings, I'm going to scroll down to it says render, and then I'm going to change the particle size to 0.1, and I'm going to give it a scale randomness of 0.5. So now if I hit F12, let's just see what we've got. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. So with the color ramp as well, let's just select my particle system with this color ramp. You don't have to have it these colors, you can have the color of the rainbow. But the most important thing with this is this last flag here. You're going to have the alpha set to 0.25 or even zero. So it disappears as it comes to the end of its lifetime. So this is the beginning spawning and this is the end spawning which directly correlates to the start frame and the lifetime of the particle. So if you extend the lifetime of the particle, you will have to adjust your color ramp in accordance with that. I'm just gonna make a couple of minor adjustments to my camera. I'm just gonna drag this around, something about there. Maybe I'll drag it across, something around there. Now I'm gonna add depth of field to this. That's easy enough. So what I'll do, hold down shift and I'm gonna right click here. So my cursor is in this position. I then hit shift a add and we'll go to empty let's say sphere just going to scale this down a bit so we can see it better i might go into top view i'm just going to drag this across to around about there and this is going to be our focal point so i'll hit numpad zero to go into camera view i'm then going to select my camera and go to my camera settings over here i've got my camera focal length set to 24 mil by the way you can change it to whatever you like i'll then enable my depth of field I'll select that empty object, which was this. So that's our focal point. I'm going to turn my blades up to 16 and maybe I'll give it an f-stop value of 1.2. Let's just see how that is. I want a nice bit of depth of field in there. Yeah, as you can see, the particles closer to the camera are out of focus, whereas the ones nearer the empty object are in focus. That just gives it a nice bit of depth of field there. Also for my render settings, close motion blur, I'll go to sampling. For sampling, I'm going to set the noise threshold to 0.025 and I'll give it a max samples of 512. That should be sufficient. And under light paths, I'm going to keep the bounces set to 3. I'm going to deactivate 
reflective core sticks and refractive core sticks. I'll then go to my output. I've already got an output directory selected, so I'm gonna save it in a folder called subscribe. Cheers folks, you legends. Set it to a PNG sequence, set it to RGB. 16-bit color depth and then it's simply a case of hitting Control F12. That will render out your image sequence. From there you can locate the folder where you saved your images and drag all the images into a video editor of your choice such as DaVinci Resolve or Blender's video editor where you can then render it out as a movie clip. So that's all for now folks. Have a great day, level up and thanks for watching.